Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Tonight is a very special Friday edition of The Late Show. We don't always do Friday shows these days, but when I woke up this morning and I saw that the top news story was the bad jobs report, I just could not resist. <laughs> I tried to, but CBS has very good lawyers. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a news shortage, admittedly, but there was one thing that we do not have a shortage of, and that is shortages. Because reportedly, <laughs> America is running out of everything. <laughs> oh, no! Not everything. <laughs> Some of my favorite stuff is things. <laughs> and, and we really are running out of everything. That's why bakeries have started selling anything bagels. Wow. The problem is, and if this, correct me if I'm wrong here, the problem is that due to COVID, the global supply chain has broken down across the board. Shipping containers are backlogged, mm. which means trains can't unload goods, which means those shipping containers and the trains can't get loaded up with new goods that are waiting to be shipped, and we can't switch to trucks because there's a shortage of drivers. It's what's being called a veritable hydra of bottlenecks. A hydra of bottlenecks, of course, is also the bad guy in Captain America 4, Winter <laughs> Shipping Logistics. <laughs> and, sure, intermodal transportation. People love. Everybody loves intermodal transportation jokes. Now, <laughs> when they say we're running out of everything, they mean everything. I'm talking toys, books, cans, bottles, pumpkins, car parts, paint, lunchables, and semiconductors. <laughs> the breadth of that list is so stunning, I need a drink. But there's also a liquor shortage. <laughs> I feel like I might be partially responsible for that one. <laughs> the most recent addition to the sold-out list is diapers. Diapers? Young parents? You're in deep doo-doo. <laughs> now, worth it. That was worth it. That was worth turning to the other camera. All shortages are hard, but this diaper one is extra hard for low-income families. Because government programs, including food stamps and WIC, do not provide funding for diapers. So now there's a push for people to donate diapers to diaper banks across the country. And you can donate to any local diaper bank, including Capital One and Two, What's in Your Diaper, <laughs> and <laughs> Bank. <laughs> These, we can say that, right? We can say that. <laughs> CBS is fine with it. I'm sure they'll be fine with it. These shortages aren't going away anytime soon, but one expert says we could solve the problem if Americans adopt a sustainable, ascetic, and homespun lifestyle that reduces our dependency on goods that activate the global supply chain. Oh, all we have to do is scale back and live a more sustainable lifestyle? We're all gonna die! <laughs> I didn't time that right. They did not time that right. Sorry. Speaking of everything and anything, here's something. Yesterday was Fox News' 25th anniversary. <laughs> They're all just yelling, Fox News! <laughs> That's right, Fox News turned 25 yesterday, so now they only have to wait another 50 years to be old enough to watch Fox News. <laughs> now, I've been... <laughs> or, or, CBS. Now, I've been an occasional critic of Fox News <laughs> for about 25 years, but I do have to give the devil his due. 25 years is a long run, and Fox has had their highlights. Stephen Colbert presents the best moments from 25 years of Fox News. Stephen Colbert, 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 Kitty Cat, yeah, thousand dollars. Snooky's pregnant. Anyway, congratulations. Keep up the good work. Now, I'm not gonna lie. What good would it do? Y'all would see right through. We've always been honest with each other, right? It's been a tough couple of years. Yeah. I want to put it out there. For real. But despite all the hardships this country is going through, it's important to remember, at any moment, we could be wiped out by an incoming asteroid. <laughs> but NASA has a plan to stop that from happening. I'll give you all the deets in our latest edition of Space News. Speedy, speedy.
Space Rock Edition. That took, that took way longer than I thought it would. For years, NASA has been studying ways to protect our planet from possible asteroid impact. And right now, they're testing a plan to deliberately crash into an asteroid's moon to change its trajectory as part of an Armageddon-style mission. We're so desperate, we're taking our apocalyptic problem-solving from movies. Quick! Somebody tell Liam Neeson that climate change kidnapped his daughter. <laughs> NASA, NASA plans to crash a high-speed aircraft into the asteroid Didymos and its moonlit Dimorphos. The impact will be rapid enough to change the speed of the moonlit, even though NASA has said that neither Didymos nor Dimorphos pose a threat to Earth. <laughs> then why are we messing with them, guys? <laughs> hey, you know what? That sleeping bear has shown no signs of wanting to attack us. <laughs> Go poke him in the eye. Go poke him. <laughs> Just stick a poke him with a stick. I'll wait here. Go poke him. First, rub your body with honey and salmon, then go poke him. <laughs> We've got more news from space, AKA the sky's attic. This time it concerns actor and grandpa telling the story of how he hurt his knee and that's why he didn't go pro. <laughs> William Shatner, set your phasers to interested because the 90-year-old Captain Kirk is headed to space with Blue Origin. That's right. Yes, sir. Captain Kirk's about to oldly go where no man has gone before. And I'll tell you all about it in our second interstellar story, Space News, the trekking stars of Star Trek edition. Yes? Can oh. I go, too? <laughs> sure. Sure, Gorn, you can go. Yesterday, on a panel at New York's Comic-Con, Shatner shared a specific space fear, saying, I'm planning on putting my nose against the window once I'm in space. My only hope is I won't see someone else looking back. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame him for being afraid. I mean, he's William Shatner. If an alien shows up, he's obliged to have sex with it. <laughs> and I'm... I'm not surprised by Shatner's reaction. Earlier this week, I tweeted, I hope William Shatner doesn't have unrealistic expectations <laughs> about what space is like. And last night, the man himself replied, surprise, Stephen, at home. That is what outer space is all about. <laughs> Indeed, that's why everybody wants to go to outer space. The little green men aren't little green men. They're large, green, beautiful women. <laughs> so, so... Good for him. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Well, that's yeah, satisfying. get it. That feels Shatner. good. So heads up to all the large, green, beautiful women in outer space. Brace yourself, because there's a 90-year-old horn dog coming your way next week in a rocket shaped like a giant schlong. And while we're sending actors to space, uh, Russia's doing this one better, because a Russian film crew is in orbit to make the first ever movie in space. I'll give you all the details on that in the third thrilling installment of tonight's galactic trilogy, Space News! Space Race Sequel Edition! In space, no one can hear you scream. Action! This week, a Russian actor and director rocketed to the International Space Station to shoot a movie that the Kremlin said will help burnish the nation's space glory and will tell the story of a surgeon who embarks on an emergency mission to the space station to save an ailing cosmonaut's life. So, porno. <laughs> oh, help, doctor. I'm suffering from low-gravity bone loss. If only there was a way for you to donate me a bone. <laughs> this is what? This is what? This is... See how angry I am? This! This is what heats up my ablative shield. Russia is stealing America's space thunder because this was our idea first. The Russian movie mission was only announced after it came out that NASA talked to Tom Cruise about making a movie in orbit. Tom, don't give up. You make your space movie. Just not a remake of Risky Business. It's too dangerous in zero-G. Stick around. <laughs>